In this video, I'll be solving this JavaScript problem. Now, these type of input output questions are very essential in JavaScript as they showcase your knowledge in JavaScript in general. And I'll be creating a series filled with bunch of these type of similar questions. And you're going to learn a lot of tips and tricks filled in JavaScript. Without any further ado, let's get started. So we need to guess the output of this question. So before I display the answer, I'm just going to walk through one by one and show you what happens and what the output should be. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this tab now in this tab i have the question pasted over here and i have this diagram set up now my goal here is to show you in depth about everything that's going on over here now before i do that i will just run this once and here's the output and if you got the same output you could still stay and listen to me explain the output or if you just simply know the reason to why this is the output then you don't need to watch any more of this video so for those who got the output wrong here is an in-depth explanation on what's going on. Basically, in JavaScript, we have this global execution context, the event loop, a callback queue, and a microtask queue. So let's consider that I print the answers down over here. This is, my, this is my console. Let's go step by step in this code. So the first line is console log one. So since JavaScript is synchronous, it's going to start from the top now. The first line is console log one. So we'll simply just print out the answer one. All right, and after that, in the next line, we reach this promise. Now, most people get confused over here. They think that this should, this is supposed to be asynchronous. So the content within this promise won't be printed and we would rather print console log four, but no, that's wrong. So as you can see over here, this, this is a promise run constructor function. So this is not going to exactly be async in nature. This is also synchronous in nature, whatever that's happening within it. When a promise is returned and then we use dot then on it, that's when it exactly becomes asynchronous in nature. But within this promise, this line, this first line, the resolve and the third line, these are all synchronous. You would say, what about resolve? Shouldn't that make things asynchronous? No, resolve doesn't actually make the code asynchronous. All resolve does is it changes the promise state to fulfilled. Now, if you remember, the promise has three states, right? Which is nothing but pending, fulfilled and rejected. So what resolve does is all it does is it changes the state of promise to fulfilled. And that is not asynchronous in nature. So after console log one, we go to the next line which which is nothing but promise equals to new promise this is just a constructor function so whatever is within that gets executed synchronously so after this line this line also goes on executing synchronously so the next output is nothing but two and then since resolve is also not asynchronous it just changes the state of the promise to fulfilled so this is also not a blocker then after that we reach three so three is going to be printed next then after that we go to the next part of the code which is nothing but console log four so four gets printed down here. Then now comes the interesting part. Now we are doing promise dot then. Promise dot then is asynchronous in nature, and promises are always stored in the microtask queue. It can also be called as job queue and so on. So when we encounter a promise, this goes to the microtask queue. All right. So in the microtask queue, we will have nothing but promise dot then. All right. So. So this part won't be executed directly because now this is asynchronous in nature, this entire promise. So after console log four, this will go to the microtask queue. Then next comes this console log seven. So we will print seven after four. Now after four, we reach set timeouts. Now there are two set timeouts over here. Now you will notice that one has the timer of 10 milliseconds and the other one has the timer of zero. Now this is done just to confuse people. One important thing to notice, the set timeout is the part of the web API. And so since it's a part of the web API, it will also behave asynchronously. So the set timeout, both these set timeouts, they are going to go to the callback queue and not the microtask queue. You need to know these concepts before you solve these type of problem that what the microtask queue, callback queue and global execution context are, as well as the event loop. So, uh, so for this problem, it's important to remember that set timeout always goes to the callback queue, but fetch and all these promises, they go to the microtask queue. So now in this, in the callback queue, we have multiple set timeouts. All right. We have multiple set timeouts. So now what is going to execute after the console log of seven? So one important thing to notice the event loop constantly keeps on monitoring the microtask queue and the callback queue. So when something in the callback queue comes, event loop, all it does is it takes it and it pushes into the global execution context. If the global execution context is empty and right now the global execution context is empty. There is nothing pushed within it. So the event loop sees that the microtask queue has something and the callback queue also has something in it. Now, it's important to remember that microtask queue is always preferred over the callback queue. So if there's anything within the microtask queue, 
that is pushed into the global execution context first by the event loop and after the execution of that is over it is popped out and then whatever is inside the callback queue gets executed so what's going to happen is this promise dot then is sent to the global execution context so here we get the promise the event loop sends the promise dot then to the global execution context now when that happens everything within this is going to execute so now we have console log 5 in the dot then after 7 we are going to get 5 and then since there is another dot then it's going to follow up into the next dot then so after 5 it's going to go one step down it's going to see dot then and it's going to print 6 all right so now it prints 6 now after 6 what's going to happen is this promise dot then is over so now this will be popped out now the promise is no more than in the global execution context and it's again empty now so now the event loop keeps monitoring so it's going to see that the callback queue has set timeouts multiple set timeouts so what it does is now it knows that it needs to push this into the global execution context but as you can see over here this has a timer of 0 and this has the timer of 10 so first we se we send the set timeout with the timer of 0 and then we execute whatever is there within it first so console log of 9 so after 6 9 comes up and then this gets popped out and then there is now only one more left one set timeout left then we go into this set timeout which gets executed after 10 milliseconds and then after that 10 milliseconds is over it goes within the contents of this and it sees that there is only console log 8 remaining so it prints out console log of 8 so in the end we get this output 1 2 3 4 7 5 6 9 8 now let's just quickly compare this with the one that we got in the compiler so as you can see here we have the output 1 2 3 4 7 5 6 9 8 and here we also have 1 2 3 4 7 5 6 9 and 8 so that is exactly how this works i hope you understand what is happening behind the scenes of this entire code if you did not understand then i can make a whole separate video explaining what the callback microtask queue event loop and global execution context do individually but i hope you got a fair idea of how this works and if this is ever asked to you in an interview you can quickly come to its solution now i'm going to upload a bunch of tricky questions like these and you're really going to have to use your brain and it's going to test your knowledge in javascript in general and i assure you it's going to help you a lot in your future interviews or just while building projects in general so if you're interested please hit the subscribe button and as usual stay tuned for more